Your Excellency Ato Batiso Wadiso, uh, Deputy Head of uh, Industry and Trade uh, Bureau, Wabit Girma, Gain uh, Ethiopia um, Country Director, and Megan Kyles, uh, Feed the Future Coordinator, Economic uh, Growth and Transformation Office, uh, USAID, and Ri Dr. Richard Pluck, uh, Director, uh, USAID FTF Eat Safe, and uh, Dr. Kabada Abagas, Instructor, Nutrition, Food Sciences and Technology, Hawassa University. And Degannet Gabramadan, of course, it's it's a for country senior program at GAIN. And uh, Dr. Milion Tamato, uh, senior researcher at Sidama Public Health Institute, and uh, invited guests and uh, uh, members of the uh, Regional Health Bureau present here this morning, and uh, partners uh, from all the partnering organizations, as you can see on our banner here and participants uh, from all the different sectors present here this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honor to welcome you all to the Eat Safe. GAIN stands for the Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition and its Swiss-based foundation uh, that was launched uh, at the United Nations in 2002. Uh, it is launched uh, to tackle human suffering caused by mal primarily by malnutrition. Uh, we work with governments, businesses, civil society, and we aim to transform food systems so that they deliver more nutritious foods for all people, especially for the most vulnerable. Our purpose is thus to improve the consumption of nutritious and safe foods for all, uh, and we focus on children, adolescents, and women, uh, because we know that working with these groups is uh, crucial to transforming attitudes about uh, food and hence uh, life chances and livelihoods. Since our establishment here in Ethiopia, which is around 10 years ago, our vision for our country is to address its nutrition challenges uh, holistically, uh, applying a systems approach that links production, processing, packaging, transport, trade, markets, and consumption to safe and nutritious food. In support of this, um, our, here in Ethiopia, we seek partnerships and build strategic alliances, uh, with primarily with government institutions, businesses, development partners, and of course, donor agencies. We design and manage projects uh, to provide technical, financial, and, and policy support to our key stakeholders in the food system in order to make this more sensitive to safe and nutritious diet. Our projects are context-driven and designed to put national policies and priorities at the forefront of our work to make uh, safe, nutritious, nutritious foods more available, affordable, and desirable by the Ethiopian people. Uh, it is in line with this uh, narrative, with this objective and approach of our organization that through the financing of USAID, we are honored to be joining hands uh, with Eat Safe Consortium members who are represented here, namely the International Livestock uh, Research Institute, uh, commonly known as ILRI, uh, Pierce Mill Entertainment and Education, and Musara Center for Behavioral Economics. Uh, and we are grateful to have all our partners uh, represented here. Acknowledging uh, also that the, the nutrition and food safety policy of Ethiopia recognizes food safety as one of the key priority issues, we believe this program could play a paramount role uh, by generating, primarily by generating evidence to inform intervention towards uh, the safety of nutritious foods, especially in the informal uh, settings. You would learn throughout the day uh, about the program and um, I would expect to be more appreciative of the slightly unique approach uh, that we take as part of this. There is a significant part of uh, the program that will uh, include uh, conducting a much needed research to better understand um, Ethiopia's food safety related risks, attitudes, knowledge and behaviors among consumers and food vendors as well as uh, the different governing entities. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the typical focus on the traditional informal market we believe would be a unique added value of this program uh, engagement uh, in Ethiopia and specifically in the uh, Sidama region. And um, I, we understand that, mo as we understand that most food safety initiatives are um, done within the formal sector. So uh, with that background, I would like to also use this opportunity to finally acknowledge and thank all the key stakeholders who have been part of the initial conversations as we were uh, kicking off this program. 
Um, and I really uh, believe and hope that this collaboration that's ki that kicked off the start at the beginning will continue throughout the program and beyond. So once again, uh, a warm welcome to all present here, and I wish you all uh, successful deliberations. Thank you. Dr. Richard, Kenya Garuit Argual, Nyabi Rodres Mato. In the program, I gave him Bichasayon, Kazibohala, Betelay, Shamacho, Chibresev, Yakem Yemegam, but program which in Chamron at Fen, Begar and Demin Saram Chamber, Aragak Tolinan, Selezi, Kenyan Biron Bicham Sayon, Yao Ketena, Kirsha, Katimurt. Kazika dem de Misaram Hulat and Akron de Mikatilim Chamber no Yarega Catalin, Selezi, Ihe, Lenyam will come the Nano Lenoyo said no, Selezi Kazi program guard Bateaze, Awasa University Naliroch, Tamara Marioch, Project Two, Kanante Gar Kemigabau, Wool Gar, Srau Kazare Bohala, Beifasi Jember, Gribacher Gije, Sertachu, Behide to Itayu. Gapoch, Teleyu, Kaptatoch, Betnat, Aslegifachu, Lower Defeat, Akami, Mion, Kazimal, Pol, Agri, Mimiwaka, Kenya Magarapo, Ahiguritum Chamber, Mion, Imeslegali program, Beluch Africa Gratim, Sartual, Selezi Utitamam, Srandes Ram Chamber, Nomaraja Lena, so Kandazam Babel, Venya Kavi, Misara, Utitam and Dihon. Wagenachu is Bachun or Gedachu, Kawachun or Genachu, the Takachu and the Misarun Chamber at Rale Malet no Mifaligo, Selezi A program, Zare, Beifa, Yeta Jamber Mohon on Abusralo, but I'm a Messaginal. Salam Nacho, good morning. Eat Safe is an important part of the United States government's Feed the Future initiative to end poverty, hunger, and malnutrition. Under Feed the Future, the United States Agency for International Development, or USAID, invests about $200 million in Ethiopia every year, reflecting our belief in the importance of food security, nutrition, and prosperity for all. At USAID, we believe strongly in the power that every single person has to affect positive change. We also believe that where Ethiopians choose to spend their hard-earned birth really matters. The more we choose to buy safe food, the more it will become available. Working with our partners and all of you, we believe Eat Safe can harness that great potential and truly make a difference. That's why I'm so grateful to be with you here today, and I'm very excited for you all to learn more about how you can get involved with Eat Safe today. Eat safe. We we look at we have four different approaches uh, with food safety. The first is the foodborne diseases, the contaminants in the food that leads to foodborne diseases. Whether the contaminants are biological, chemical, physical. We then also try and understand the important linkage between food safety and nutrition, because we we have heard a lot about nutrition about how it's important to have your vegetables, your fruits, your animal protein. We also hear about food safety, but I don't think we appreciate the connections and the linkages between food safety uh, and nutrition. The third approach is looking at consumers. We all have a great deal of power when we choose which food we buy, so that's an important component. And then finally, the prioritization of food safety nationally uh, and globally. So foodborne disease, uh, this is um, a global problem and as has already been stated this morning, it affects many, many people. I think each and every one of us in this room, we have had our experiences with foodborne diseases. One in 10 people get sick each year. Children bear 40% of the foodborne disease burden, while they only represent 9% of the global population. So un unfortunately, the, the more vulnerable, including the elderly, suffer from foodborne diseases uh, more than the general um, population. A study done in 2015 
said there are 600 million illnesses, 420,000 deaths a year, and they estimate $110 billion uh, of lost revenue due to food, foodborne diseases. The most common disease agents are biological, and they are uh, diarrheal disease agents. Uh, and I think these are ones a lot of the food safety specialists are very familiar with. And as mentioned uh, by Megan, it's an inequitable burden. The low and middle income countries in Southeast Asia, uh, South Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa, represents around 75% of all of those deaths. Uh, but they represent only 41% of the global population. The highest burden is in Africa. When you look at the per capita foodborne disease burden, it's 27 times higher than in Europe or North America. So that's the one way of looking at it. You know, what's causing all these problems and where do the burdens fall? Ethiopian context, if you look at this small uh, cycle, you know, if food, whichever step or wherever it contaminates, if the food or the water or the food packaging material or anything which comes in contact with the food is contaminated, at least one of the indicators, diarrhea comes. And the diarrhea leads in a severe and repeat episode to the death. If not, malnutrition comes. If a person is malnourished, then there will be a death. If survive, again to the diarrhea. So this is the one which triggers the food. Unsafe food triggers a vicious cycle of death and the survival against malnutrition. You see? So it's always with that. It's embedded with our own physiology. It's embedded with our uh, body system. It's not just somebody's task. That is just to show how we are actually embedded with the problem unless we manage ourselves and the, the food we consume. Uh, here, what are the main sources? We said from India to the end, from production to consumption. So human beings, we are the most notorious uh, contaminants. We, human beings. Because those organisms with us are very friendly to attack or to help you. But most of the organisms in our body systems, when they get the food, they produce toxins or they grow in your body and initiate the disease. The water, which water? Irrigation water, washing water, cooking water, whatever, we, wherever, you know. In the production, the irrigation might be a contaminated one, or when they harvest, they may wash with, uh, un, I mean, uh, uh, poor sanitary water, or it might be contaminated with the flooding or sewerage or animal dung, whatever. So water, animals. Animals, which mean, it doesn't mean just always a big animals, small insects. It's not only they bite your food, but they contaminate with a lot of germs or chemicals and the like. So food has to be handled in a soil. Soils in a dust form or whatever you call. Uh, soils is not only for the plants, soils for everybody. I mean, if you are walking around somewhere here and you'll find a lot of dust, you may not see, but if you blew your uh, coat, you'll find a lot of dust. And part of this heavy metals, physical or chemical contaminants and the micro. And the equipment, which equipment? It might be a maze cutting cycle. It might be a machine. It might be a processing uh, machine. It might be knives. Anything. Anything at any step where the tool engage and in come in contact with the food, that's the risk factor. Then we have to clean, we have to manage those. And the environment, the air, the water, or whichever around ourselves. So uh, we have to have uh, a, a public awareness so as to understand what they do with the food has a risk if they are not aware how to do. We have to teach people how to do so as to avoid or minimize the risk of food safety factors while they are handling or selling or buying or growing the food. So uh, this food safety is still a risk factor in Ethiopia. Why? Because uh, as I said earlier, the food safety is still continuous, even worsen in Ethiopia. I am closer to this system. It's worsen, honestly speaking. Why? Let's organize the food system here. Even the, uh, uh, it's not even uh, the task of, 
an employee, an expert on the desk, even the leaders, they don't evaluate a person who is doing on the for safety or quality. They don't. It's not part of their evaluation. Okay? Then we have to uh, pay attention. Unless it's structure market, market uh, infrastructure, the supply chain management are poor, unless developed in food industry, yes, we are just, even if you don't have plots, most of us in the city, still we are eating what the farmers produce directly. You buy cabbage, you buy beef, you buy, just we are, even if we are not the producer, we are like the farmers who are taking the primary produce. Okay? That's uh, the reason. And, uh, the uh, low capacity, that's uh, another uh, problem in service provision and the like. And also absence of food law and legislation in this country. We don't have. It's more than six years. It's not passed, neither rejected. That's why all these informal traders are making their business because of lack of food law. The only means is just if that's a criminal attempt or something like that. Otherwise, there is no food law. That's also another issue. In order to uh, achieve our goal, we have set three uh, key objectives. The first objective is generating knowledge and evidence about consumers, their value, perception, and uh, other components. This will help us to understand uh, the consumers and the vendors so that it will be possible to make tailor-made projects. The uniqueness of this program is also uh, with this one. It starts from generating its own research. The next activity following the generation of the evidence is designing the program. The program will be based on the information gathered during the research of the first phase. And finally, the program will be concluded by capturing lesson and uh, assessing the impact it has made as a result of the implementation of uh, the program. Finally, uh, stakeholder, um, it's safe is, uh, food safety is shared responsibility. Uh, it's not only implemented by uh, government alone or private sector alone or uh, consumers or vendors. It's joint responsibility. So it's expected that as a result of this program, we'll create a network of actors that we can exchange information and learning to improve and enhance the safety of uh, food safety. Before I conclude, I really would like to appreciate the support uh, we get so far from the USAID mission in Ethiopia for their um, uh, leadership and for their uh, valuable uh, input providing us. Uh, I would like also uh, to appreciate and uh, I'm actually very much impressed by sub support we are being given through Trade and Industry Bureau of Sidama. And I also would like to acknowledge the Sidama Public Health Institute for their professionalism and for their uh, timely delivering the IRB uh, approval. Hawassa University for their support and encouragement. We also would like to uh, acknowledge the vendors and consumers in Aroge Gabia and uh, Addisu Gabia for their time and commitment to support uh, this research activity. When we say we eat, it's safe, if we don't eat safe, what we come? As can be, you know, the, what, if, what is edible, what we use for our diet, which can be, which can increase our vulnerability to various diseases can be modified. If we really take a sort of exercise, we will prevent what? Obesity. We will just prevent what? Overweight, which really actually brings about Increment, increment in overall hypertension. About 19% of cases locally, including in, in the African region, the problem is from hypertension. That is emanated from uh, just very inefficient or insufficient exercise. So, this has to be taken care of. <laughs>